Do you ever feel like you just got checked by God? Like Father just said, right up the back of your head, what you doing? But you didn't get it. So then he sent like 15 other things to smack you up in the back of your head with it throughout the course of the day. And you still didn't get it. So you're finding reasons not to go to bed when you're exhausted at night and figure, oh, I'll go do this. It's benign enough. And you get smacked in the head yes again because you still didn't get it. You ever had one of those days? Yeah. It's one of those days. Because it's not pertinent in my own perspective. I didn't think it was relevant to the work. And I didn't really want to talk about it. And yet there it is over and over and over and over in my face. And every time I go and say, that's not relevant to my life, so I don't have anything to say there. Nothing works and I get smacked in the head again. So I will be putting together some information that I have to do. But in preparation for that... I have a few questions maybe you might want to think on just for yourself you know how I can get sometimes right are you single do you want to be single do you want to not be single why what's the best thing about being single what is the worst thing about being single? What is the best thing about your desire to not be single? What is the worst thing about your desire to become single? I'm sure you can see the pattern here. What is the worst thing about being in your relationship? What is the best thing about being in your relationship? What makes you stay in your relationship? Do you have to be alone to be lonely? Do you have to be lonely if you're alone what is loneliness to you soon I will come upon the anniversary of my freedom from my marriage. Each time one of these approaches, I express great, great, great gratitude to Crystal Judson and her family for the sacrifice that she had to make for me to get that freedom. And because of that sacrifice that cost so greatly for me and so many like me to gain that freedom, I'm very contemplative automatically this time of the year this year though <laughs> it's a whole new ball game right so I did not experience my first moment of living alone on my own no partner no owner, no child, no parent, no roommate, no friend. Completely and utterly alone. In a physical manner. Until September of 2009. Shortly before my 40th birthday. There's a story. Talk about help I've fallen and I can't get up. It's not a story relevant to what we're talking about, though. 
So, I used to be the loneliest person in the crowded room. I haven't experienced a moment of loneliness in a very long time. So, as you can tell, I've been getting smacked in the head by Father for a little bit now. Because I don't want to talk to you about loneliness. I don't want to talk about it at all. I don't want to remember it. I don't want to accidentally feel it. I don't want to acknowledge it. That's ego. That's completely, totally, utterly selfishness. It's rebellious. It's mean and it's cruel. And I will not do that to you anymore. I'm sorry. My deepest apologies for my ego and my selfishness in this manner. I have to apologize to you. You know we do. It's forgiveness. It has to be done. So I will be coming to you about loneliness. One of the words from the Powerless lesson that we are beginning through our Getting Past Broken Recovery and Healing series. There's two words left in that list that Maverick originally brought up. Loneliness and emptiness. And I didn't intend to talk about either one of them. I was just waiting him out whenever he's ready for the next part. But I don't make the rules around here. I just try and abide for the ride. That's all that matters to me. The ride. Been a rebel, renegade, whatever you want to use. My, my nickname at school at work is Renegade. They call me Ren. It's part of my handle. I own that, so... I have no shame there, <laughs> but I got to be honest with you about it. So to the newcomers, this is an additional period of time for maybe getting um, aligned with the classwork and getting yourself into a learning place. And these are the kinds of other lessons that come with me. I also have a thing I do called randomness happens. Sometimes you might hear me talk about lessons from the well, things like that. So we'll have some words about loneliness. <sighs> After as many smacks as I've had in the head recently, I might end up having to talk to you about emptiness too. But, oh, do you guys know about rock painting? Have you ever done that with your kids, you guys? So we do it with some of the families that work, the kids that are artistic, they love it. And they paint these rocks and they hide them and you find them. And you look on Facebook and find out where all the places where these rocks have been. We have some really cool um, secret treasure things the kids down here can do around pirates and dragons. I'm a pirate mermaid, you know, I'm on the edge of the land. But the dragon cove, it's this awesome thing, but it's all about rock painting. And... Um, I'm going to come to you about rock painting here in the future because it's this really cool image that I have been gifted about the human brain, which I'm very interested in, have one that's damaged, and I've got a lot of studying I do about it. I'm not a doctor, but I've got real life experience. And um, what I see in my own broken head about the brain when I have images and visualizations and recently... A rock painting experience about the brain and the narrow gate <laughs> and so much more. <laughs> so there's some things to think about for some information coming up and hopefully there'll be some benefit in it for you. So <laughs> have a good night y'all.